Here is a fascinating equation that mixes exponentiation, factorials, and prime numbers. We are looking for positive integer solutions for a and b, where p must be a prime. These conditions are critical. a and b must be positive integers, and p must be a prime number. Our entire strategy will hinge on the properties of p. An equation with a prime number is a strong signal to use modular arithmetic. Let's analyze this equation modulo p. We start with our original equation. Our goal is to see how each side behaves when we divide by p, and look at the remainder. This is what the equation looks like in the world of modulo p. Any multiple of p is congruent to zero modulo p, so this p term simplifies nicely. This simplifies our congruence to a to the power p is congruent to b factorial modulo p. Now, the term a to the power of p should immediately bring to mind a famous result from number theory, Forma's Little Theorem. Now, we apply a powerful tool from number theory, Forma's Little Theorem. It states that for any prime p and any integer a, a to the power p is congruent to a modulo p. This holds true even if a is a multiple of p. Applying this gives us an elegant relationship. A is congruent to B factorial modulo P. The behavior of B factorial modulo P depends entirely on whether B is greater than or equal to P. This gives us two distinct cases to investigate. First, let's consider the case where B is greater than or equal to the prime P. We begin with our key congruence. If b is greater than or equal to p, then the number p must be one of the factors in the expansion of b factorial. What does this imply? It implies that b factorial is a multiple of p, making it congruent to zero modulo p. Consequently, a must also be a multiple of p. Since a is a multiple of p, we can write a as k times p for some positive integer k. Let's substitute this back into our original equation. This gives us k times p, all raised to the power p, equals b factorial plus p. Expanding the left side, we get k to the power p times p to the power p equals b factorial plus p. Now comes a crucial insight. Let's analyze this equation with respect to divisibility by p squared. The left side, k to the power p times p to the power p is always divisible by p squared for any p greater than or equal to 2, since p to the power p contains at least two factors of p. Therefore, the right side, b factorial plus p, must also be divisible by p squared. Now let's analyze when b factorial plus p can be divisible by p squared, given that b is greater than or equal to p. If b is between p and 2p minus 1, then b factorial contains exactly one factor of p. This means b factorial is divisible by p, but not by p squared. So b factorial plus p is congruent to p plus p, which is 2p modulo p squared. This is not divisible by p squared unless p equals 2. If b is greater than or equal to 2p, then b factorial contains at least two factors of p from the terms p and 2p. This means b factorial is divisible by p squared. However, b factorial plus p is congruent to 0 plus p, which is p modulo p squared. This is also not divisible by p squared. This general argument proves that for any prime p greater than or equal to 3, there are no solutions when b is greater than or equal to p. The divisibility by p squared requirement cannot be satisfied. The case p equals 2 requires special attention because p squared equals p to the power p equals 4. Let's check this case directly. The equation becomes a squared equals b factorial plus 2. Since a is even, let it equal 2k. Substituting a with 2k gives us this expression. First, let's expand the squared term on the left side. 
2K all squared becomes 4K squared. Now, to isolate the factorial, we need to move the 2 to the other side. We subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. We can see a common factor of 2 on the left-hand side. Let's factor it out. This reveals a crucial structure, 2 multiplied by an odd number. Now, look at the term 2K squared minus 1. This is always an odd number. If B were 4 or greater, B factorial would contain the factors 2 and 4, making it divisible by 8. The left side, however, is not always divisible by 8. Let's try a different approach. We can divide by 2. Dividing both sides by 2, we get this relation. The left side is odd. Therefore, the right side, B factorial divided by 2, must also be odd. When does this happen? If B is 2, B factorial divided by 2 is 1, which is odd. If B is 3, B factorial divided by 2 is 3, which is odd. For any B greater than or equal to 4, B factorial contains factors of 1, 2, 3, and 4, meaning B factorial divided by 2 will be even. So, we only need to check B equals 2 and B equals 3. If B is 2, A squared equals 4, which means A equals 2. All conditions are met, A and B are positive integers, and P is prime. We have A solution. Our first solution is A equals 2, B equals 2, and P equals 2. If B is 3, a squared equals 8, which has no integer solution for A. For P equals 2, our general argument doesn't immediately apply because P squared equals 4, which is the same as P to the power P. We need to check small values of B directly. From our earlier analysis, we also found that when P equals 3 and B equals 4, we get A equals 3 as our second solution. Now for our second case where B is strictly less than the prime P. First, we must establish a crucial bound on A. Let's prove that A must also be less than P. We will use proof by contradiction. Let's assume A is greater than or equal to P. If A is at least P, then A to the power of P is at least P to the power of P. This gives us a powerful inequality. Rearranging, we find that P to the power P minus P must be less than or equal to B factorial. However, we know B is less than P, which means B factorial is strictly less than P factorial. This creates an impossible squeeze. For any prime p greater than or equal to 2, the term p times p to the p minus 1 minus 1 is far larger than p factorial. This is a clear contradiction. Therefore, our initial assumption must be false. We have successfully proven that a must be less than p. With a less than p, Pharma's little theorem holds, and we can use our congruence. A is congruent to B factorial modulo P. This means their difference must be an integer multiple of P. Let's analyze the integer K. If K is 0, then A equals B factorial. Let's substitute this into the original equation. This gives us B factorial to the power of P equals B factorial plus P. For B equals 1, this is impossible for B greater than 1. The left side grows far too quickly. There are no solutions here. If k is 1 or greater, then a is greater than or equal to p plus b factorial. This directly contradicts our finding that a must be less than p, so k cannot be positive. The only remaining possibility is that k is negative. This implies b factorial minus a is greater than or equal to p. From this, we get an upper bound for A. A must be less than or equal to B factorial minus P. Substituting this bound for A back into our original equation forces the inequality that B factorial minus P, all raised to the power P, must be greater than or equal to B factorial plus P. Here's the crucial insight. Since B is strictly less than P, and P is prime, B factorial does not contain P as A factor. For any prime P greater than or equal to 3, we have B factorial is strictly less than P. 
This makes b factorial minus p a negative number. Since p is an odd prime greater than or equal to 3, raising a negative number to an odd power gives a negative result. So the left side of our inequality is negative. Meanwhile, the right side, b factorial plus p, is clearly positive since both terms are positive. We have a fundamental contradiction. A negative number cannot be greater than or equal to a positive number. The only remaining edge case is p equals 2 with b equals 1. This gives us 1 minus 2 squared, which is 1, greater than or equal to 1 plus 2, which is 3. This is also false. Therefore, this rigorous sign analysis proves that case 2 yields no solutions whatsoever. After a thorough analysis, we can summarize our findings. This Diophantine equation, which seems to span different areas of mathematics, has only two sets of solutions. They are a, b, and p, all equal to 2, and a equals 3, b equals 4, and p equals 3. Thank you for joining me on this mathematical journey factorial. If you enjoyed exploring this Diophantine equation and learned something new about modular arithmetic and number theory, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing for more mathematical adventures. Your support helps me create more content like this.